Hello guys, welcome to another episode of Jay is Mike, the podcast that brings you insight and inspiration for personal development, a stronger relationship and a better society. I am your host, John Ewo, and today we're diving into a topic that's a real concern for many couples, commitment in marriage. It's an exciting episode and we've got a lot to cover. So let's get started. You've probably heard the words, till death do us part. But in reality, commitment is one of the biggest challenges many couples face. According to Forbes advisor, the lack of commitment is indeed a leading cause of divorce in the United States. It's at 75%. So 75% of Divorce in the United States is due to lack of commitment. Yes, you heard that right, 75%. Shocking, isn't it? Imagine not infidelity, not financial problems or conflict, but the lack of commitment. So that is why this is a very, very important episode of our podcast. So stay tuned and take notes. Let's dare to discuss how you can strengthen your commitment and build a lasting, loving marriage or a relationship that is sustainable. In this episode, we're also going to explore practical ways to help you stay committed in your relationship or in your marriage. And so to kick things off, let's delve into the fundamental importance of commitment in a relationship. Commitment is the cornerstone of a strong and lasting relationship. It's not just about staying together. It's about actively choosing each other every day. When you're truly committed, you invest time and effort into making your relationship work. Commitment involves emotional, mental, and physical dedication to your partner. It means you're in for the long haul through good times and bad times. Now, a committed relationship brings emotional security, it brings trust, and a deeper connection with your partner. It is, in fact, a source of stability and support in your life. So when you stay committed, you have that stability and support, not just in your relationship, but in your life. So with that in mind, let's delve into some practical strategies that can help you stay committed in your marriage or in your relationship. The very first practical strategy to stay committed in your relationship or in your marriage is open and honest communication. Open and honest communication. Now this is the cornerstone of your success in marriage. Open communication serves as a practical strategy that helps couples to stay committed and connected over a long period of time. When you are transparent with each other about your thoughts, your feelings, your concerns. It definitely fosters trust and mutual understanding. When you share desires and expectations, it allows both of you to align your goals and it helps you to work together towards a shared vision for the future. Open communication encourages problem solving. It encourages conflict resolution. As couples, when you address your issues as they arise, rather than letting them fester and potentially grow into larger or more divisive problems, it is a great sign that you are not communicating openly and honestly in your relationship or in your marriage. Be open 
to talk to each other when things arise. Do not sweep them under the carpet. Now this level of openness and honesty in communication can lead you to a very stronger emotional bond and it can even increase the sense of security within your relationship, which in turn can bolster commitment and make your relationship more resilient in the face of challenges. Honest communication helps partners to build a deep sense of intimacy and vulnerability. When you share your thoughts and feelings, even if they are difficult or uncomfortable, it allows for genuine connection and a sense of being heard and valued. Now, this vulnerability can lead to increased empathy and emotional support from both partners. This creates a strong sense of teamwork, a strong sense of unity. When both of you feel that you can express yourselves openly without judgment, you are more likely to stay committed and to weather the storms that every relationship encounters. So ultimately, open communication and honest communication both act as a practical and invaluable tool to strengthen your bond as couples. The second practical tool that I want to talk about in this episode is maintaining trust. Trust is equally a very strong pillar upon which any relationship should build. When there is lack of trust, a relationship is definitely bound to crumble. Trust is not something that comes overnight. You don't meet somebody for the first time or in the first two months and you automatically trust them. No. Trust is something that you build over time. And you build trust over time by being honest, by being able to communicate, and by being willing to open up and be vulnerable to your partner. Now, when both partners feel heard and understood, they are more likely to trust each other and they are more likely to remain committed in their relationship. So it's very, very important to be vulnerable and to express your emotions honestly. This is not only to foster trust, but this will help you build emotional intimacy in your relationship. Consistent and empathetic communication will also reinforce the sense that you can rely on each other through tough times and in good times. You build a stronger foundation of trust when you can rely on each other. When you maintain trust, you are setting and respecting boundaries. Trust can be eroded if one of you feels that their personal space or privacy is always invaded. And this is something that couples need to understand. The fact that you are married doesn't shun your partner from his or her friends, doesn't shun your partner from having fun. You do not always have to be in their face. You do not always have to be wherever they go. You must give each other space. You must respect boundaries. Do not always invade their privacy. And this is not an easy thing to do. We've seen relationships where the lady must know what's going on in the man's phone and vice versa. The man must know what's going on in the lady's phone. And I'll tell you all, it's not easy when you start thinking in your head that your partner is doing something behind your back that you need to start checking their phones. You need to start invading their privacy. When you erode trust like that in your relationship, you are bound to crumble. And so you need to pick up yourself. When you set clear boundaries 
and discuss what is acceptable and what is not acceptable in your relationship, you can prevent unintentional breaches of trust. When you respect each other's boundary, you demonstrate their commitment to you and your well-being and your emotional security. Now, this reinforces trust in your relationship. Consistently demonstrating reliability and consistency in actions and words will also help you to solidify trust. Be a person who follows your words with your action. Be consistent in words and in action. Make sure you keep your promises. Be there for each other when they are celebrating, when they are crying. Reinforce that belief that each other can count on each other. Reinforce that belief that your wife your girl, your man can count on you. This is a very fundamental, practical tool for your relationship to last. And the third practical tool I want to talk about, which is very important, and a lot of times couples fail to heed to this particular one. It is about self-care and individual growth. When you fall into the dynamic of we are one because we are married, you know, the two become one. And people really love to side with the scripture on that, you know, no doubt about it. And the two shall become one. But listen, there is no way you can give what you don't have. You must take care of yourself and you must grow as a person in your relationship. Commitment in a relationship doesn't mean losing yourself. In fact, it is very essential to maintain your individuality and your personal growth. Now, when you're in a long-term relationship like a marriage, maintaining commitment requires that balance. It requires the balance between self-care and individual Prioritize your physical, emotional, and mental well-being. Because if you're not mentally, physically, and emotionally upright in your marriage, there is no way you will reflect that vibe to your partner. Take the time to nourish and rejuvenate yourselves as couples. When you are at your best, that is when you can give your best. I'll say it again. When you are at your best, that is when you give your best. So in a relationship, it's give and take. So if you don't take care of yourself, you don't grow as a person, you cannot be at your best. And guess what? You will never be able to give your best. It's very important that you communicate openly about personal needs. Communicate about your boundaries to ensure that both of you have the space to recharge and pursue activities that bring you joy and fulfillment. Do not lose yourselves. Do not lose your ambitions. Do not lose your goals. Do not lose the things that you love to do. Because those are the things that help you grow as a person. Those are the things that balance you emotionally. Those are the things that balance you mentally and even physically. So it's very important. Self-care within your relationship can prevent a lot of burnout. It can prevent a lot of resentment because it fosters an atmosphere of mutual support and mutual understanding. Individual growth is a very crucial component to sustain a committed relationship. When you continuously seek personal development and you better equip yourself, 
you will be able to adapt and grow together. So in your relationship, each partner must pursue what interests them. You must pursue your goals. You must pursue your personal passions. When you do that, you not only enhance your self-esteem, but you also bring a very fresh perspective and experience into your relationship. And this growth can be a shared journey. I'm not saying here that you must now be going different routes and everybody is taking their own turn. No. These goals can still be a shared journey. Couples can set mutual goals and explore new interests together. That will help you to deepen your connection. And when you foster an environment that encourages personal growth, you can ensure that your relationship will remain a dynamic and fulfilling one because you evolve and face life's challenges together with resilience and unity. The next practical tool is forgiveness. Forgiveness is a very powerful practical strategy for couples to maintain a committed and healthy relationship. In any long-term relationship, conflict and misunderstandings will happen. Those are inevitable. And when you harbor resentment, you will erode the connection that you have over time. When you choose to forgive, you can break free from the cycle of blame and negativity. You can create the space for healing and the space for growth in your relationship. Forgiveness is not about ignoring or condoning with hurt actions. It is a conscious decision to release that grip of anger and grudges. It helps you in your relationship to move forward with a clean slate and a renewed focus on the positive aspect of your relationship. And I want to say here again that forgiveness First is for the good of the one who forgives before the offender. When you forgive somebody, you free yourself first. Real forgiveness happens when the offender does not even know that you have forgiven them. That is when you reflect a sense of freedom, a sense of joy that your offender your partner cannot be blindsided but see you in that light. When you forgive, I tell you for a fact, the tension that exists between your heart, the gap that exists between the hearts of the couple shrinks. You know why people shout at each other? Because their hearts become so distant in their marriage, in their relationship. And guess what happens? If you want to talk to somebody who is in a distance, my dear, you need to raise your voice. And that is why couples raise their voices at each other. Because when you create an environment that puts your heart apart in your relationship, there is bound to be shouting, there is bound to be destructive conflict. So forgiveness is the first step for you to start shrinking that down, for you to start pulling it all together. When you forgive each other, you create an environment where trust can flourish. You make it easier to discuss issues. You make it easier to share feelings. And you make it easier to work together to find solutions to your challenges. This emotional maturity and willingness to forgive strengthens the current relationship, but also it sets a precedence for resolving conflict in the future in a constructive way. Forgiveness is a foundation for lasting commitment because it helps you as a couple to navigate the ups and downs of your relationship. 
It helps you to look at your challenges. Look at each other with empathy. Look at each other with understanding. And of course, a shared commitment to build a fulfilling life together. And of course, most people think this is a thing of the past. You know, the next practical strategy I'm going to talk about. Most people think it's a thing of the past. Sacrifice and compromise. Now, don't get me wrong. Marriage is a very interesting institution. Marriage is a very happy institution. And so, it is not a place for sacrifice and compromise always as people try to make it. You have to persevere to make your marriage work. You have to sacrifice your dreams. You have to sacrifice your feelings. You have to sacrifice your... No, this is not the kind of sacrifice and compromise I'm talking about here. Sacrifice and compromise are very crucial practical strategies that can help you maintain a strong, committed relationship. Marriage, definitely, is a beautiful institution, but it's not always an easy one. There will be times when you put your partner's needs and well-being ahead of yours, and this must be reciprocal. It's not one-sided. There will be times when you put a closed eye to some things that you would rather not do if you were living by yourself. When you find yourself in a situation where you don't get that back from your partner, that is not a healthy sacrifice and compromise we're talking about. Keep the relationship at the center of all decision making. This is very essential for both of you. Most people will tell the, 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 the lady, oh, you need to sacrifice, you need to persevere in the relationship. You, need to, you don't need to take crap because you both came into that relationship together. And so you both have to put in the hard work. You both have to meet in the middle. You both have to discuss your do's and don'ts. You both have to sacrifice to tolerate each other in order to find common ground. Sacrifice demonstrates selflessness, not selfishness. And it demonstrates a genuine commitment to the relationship. It fosters trust and emotional connection. Sacrificing can be as simple as compromising on what movies to watch, or it can still be as significant as making a career decision that benefits the family as a whole. This happens when both partners are willing to make sacrifices for each other. It creates a sense of reciprocity and mutual support that can strengthen the bond between the both of you. Compromise requires an open and honest communication. It requires active listening and the willingness to meet in the middle. It doesn't have to be one person sacrificing and compromising everything to make the marriage work, to make the relationship work. No, it takes two to get this ball rolling. And so when couples embrace compromise, they are more likely to find solutions that work for both of them. You are more likely to reduce resentment and foster a more harmonious relationship. When you sacrifice and compromise, you also promote a sense of fairness and equity within the relationship. This is very crucial for a long-term commitment. A combination of sacrifice and compromise can help you as a couple to navigate the ups and downs of your relationship. It ensures that your love and commitment remains strong and unwavering in your relationship. And the next strategy, hey, make time for each other. In this fast-paced world we live in, it's very easy for couples to get caught up, you know, with their individual responsibilities and actually neglect the connection that brought them together. 
when you set aside dedicated quality time for each other, it helps you to nurture your emotions. It helps to keep the flame of your love burning. You can do this through night dates. Who says when you're married, you don't go for dates? Get yourself out of the house. Go for night dates, weekends away. Just take a trip, even if it's a road trip. Or simply just walking together, you know. When you support each other's personal growth and aspiration, it is very likely that your relationship is going to stay stronger and you both will be more committed in that relationship. When you respect each other's ambitions and when you dedicate time to help them achieve it, you can show your commitment to each other's individuality. And you do this while maintaining a strong partnership. When you make time for each other, this is not just about how many times. It's not about the quantity of time. It is about the quality. It is the quality of the moment that you spend together. That reinforces the foundation of trust. It reinforces the foundation of your love. And it reinforces the commitment that forms that cornerstone for your relationship to last. Take time to disconnect from technology. It's very, very common that you find couples going out on a date. And the moment they sit at table, each one takes out their phone and they're on social media. They're chatting chatting and chatting with people who are miles and miles away and forgetting the very reason why they came for dinner. And it's not because they're having problems, but this is how we are conditioned today in the society that we live in. Try to find time to unplug from technology. Create quality time for each other. You can have as many dates as possible in a week. Trust me. If you do not unplug from technology and each time you go out, you're checking your phone, you're on social media, that is quantity time. It's not quality time. So make time for each other and let that not just be quantity. Quantity is good. But if all the quantity can translate into quality, even better. And the next strategy I want to talk about is celebrating milestones celebrate milestones in your relationship this is a very practical and meaningful strategy for you to stay committed in your marriage milestones could be anniversaries could be any achievement or even small victories that demonstrate that you are enduring in your love and you're sharing in that journey when you acknowledge and commemorate these moments, you create an opportunity to reflect on your journey together, fostering a sense of connection and appreciation for one another. It's a chance to take a break, to express gratitude, and to reaffirm your commitment. This will strengthen your emotional bond and it will help to sustain a healthy relationship so celebrate each other celebrate milestones when you celebrate milestones you also inject excitement and novelty in your relationship planning and participating in special events become even simple they become heartfelt gestures that can reignite the spark and passion that may have dwindled over time when you celebrate milestones, it creates that sense of shared history and it builds positive memories that couples can draw upon during challenging times. When you set aside dedicated moments to celebrate your love and partnership, you can cultivate a deep sense of togetherness and resilience. And so helping you stay committed and thriving in your relationship needs your partner to join you in celebrating milestones 
set shared goals and work together towards these goals. When a couple establishes common objectives, whether they are short-term, like planning a vacation, or even long-term, like saving for a new home or saving for a project, this fosters a sense of unity and purpose. Now, this shared sense of purpose helps in strengthening the emotional bond, but it also provides a framework for mutual support. When both of you are invested in achieving your shared goals, you become each other's cheerleader. You become each other's confidant. You create a supportive and loving atmosphere in your relationship. When you set shared goals, it encourages open communication and collaboration. You must discuss and compromise in order for you to outline your aspirations and create a plan to achieving those aspirations. This can enhance your problem-solving skills and it can encourage you to work together as a team. So have shared goals. Work towards them together. Don't let one person work towards those goals together. No, have shared goals. Make a contribution to make sure that those goals are realized, they are achieved together. When you work towards your shared goals together, you reinforce trust and accountability. Both of you begin to rely on each other to fulfill that commitment. And so when you share the commitment to a common purpose, it can help you weather storms of life. It can help you to maintain a strong and a lasting relationship. As always, you all know I'm not a marriage counselor. But I do hope that this episode has provided you with valuable insights and strategies to help you stay committed in your relationship. We are here to build and make families hold together. So whatever you have picked from this episode, which is valuable to you, hold on to that. Practice that. Share that. If you have any questions or topics, that you'd like us to cover in the future episodes, please leave us a comment in the comment section and we will address those. And I'll see you guys in the next episode. Until then, let's stay committed in our relationship. Let's stay in love in our relationships and let's stay tuned. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button. I'm your host, John Yu. Bye-bye.